Dear audience, let us take you now to our humble theater of the streets. Picture Venice in spring, feel the mist in the air. Uh, the Glorious Ones is an idea that Lynn has loved since actually since as long as I've known her since 1983 and uh, we, I don't give up easily. she doesn't give up she's very <laughs> tenacious and, and we, we began working uh, on the glorious ones in earnest uh, in 1992 and um, one of the themes of the glorious ones is about the passing of the torch theatrically uh, there's a man uh, who's the center of the of the troupe called Flaminio Scala and he is the lead actor, he writes the scenarios, he is the producer, he is the epicenter of his troupe. And, and he was a real historical real historical character. character. Too. He yeah. really lived. Yeah. And another real historical character, uh, French, Francesco Andreini, he's the young Turk who enters the troupe. So it's about these two generations of theater and ultimately the older generation has to let it go and you know passes the torch on to the younger people who then come up and you know build upon the ideas uh, that their that their predecessors have. So when we first began working on the show, uh, it was '92, and I really, really identified with Fran Francesco Andreini, the young Turk. And when the show was finally produced at Lincoln Center Theater, it was, uh, I believe, 2007. Seven. Seven. Two thousand and seven. <laughs> so at that point, so much time had elapsed that I. Uh, totally related to Flaminio Scala. And I think that that had been a quick, uh, a show that had been, uh, of course we had written Susicola, a Ragtime, and many other shows in between, but I think if that show had been produced early, uh, it wouldn't have been as rich, because I, I got to... You wouldn't have understood I be, it as I began well. it in my yes, youth, yeah. and, I, and I ended it in my middle age, and there <laughs> you have it, you know, so I understand all sides of that, that, that equation. Yeah. If I were going to give a little how-to for the glorious ones, I would suggest that it be done on the simplest set. Keep in mind how the Glorious Ones did it in the 16th century. They put up a little wooden platform. It might have had a little catwalk up top, maybe. Um, they would cut out a paper moon. They would um, you know, put some stars made out of paper or whatever on a backdrop, and they would do it in the most primitive and simple way. And I think that's why the show works so well for, you know, community theaters, for colleges, because um, it doesn't need a whole lot. To, uh, to bring to life this ragtag world, which is what it was. You know, comedy mm -hmm. on stage, drama backstage, as all theater is, <laughs> As really. it is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be my real practical advice, is to keep it as simple and as homemade as possible. And, and do a little research. Read, read books on the Commedia dell'arte. There are so many um, at, that show the characters. They, they wore masks. That's a whole other big factor, uh, big feature of the Commedia dell'arte back in those days. So there are classic masks that um, you know, have big noses and very comic faces. And much of it was done with gestures. And each of those characters has a signature gesture. And that's stuff you can read up on. Yeah, um, really uh, it's really, really fun. They had set pieces that they did called Lazzi. And there are books, if you Google Lazzi, you'll see what they were, um, just like stuffing as many cherries into your mouth as you put Like on Lucy and the Conveyor you know, Belt yeah, is a Lazzi. Exactly. Yeah. So all of that stuff is, is, you should look into it because it makes the show just a breeze to do and, and really fun. Comedy, 